different communities. Some of us are more involved. Some of us are less involved. Kim and, and Al, you're in the trenches, so. I, I think it's an interesting idea about coming up and speaking to the parents right after a game. Um, you know, I would probably argue one might want to enact the 24-hour rule, if for better or for worse. You win big, you lose big, you, in girls hockey, tie another game 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, you know, it might not be the best use of my time, but, but and, and I don't mean in the negative, I, I have no problem ta talking to parents, uh, but I know I'm not their friend. We're not friends, just like I'm not friends with the players. Uh, but what I've always done is I send an email every Monday outlining the plan for the week. I do a little recap over the weekend. You know, hey, we played two great games. I thought a forecheck did really well, blah, 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 blah. And that happens every single Monday all season long. They know when it's coming. I tell them I'll get it to them before noon, although I do use the caveat. I do use my children as an excuse occasionally and don't get it out till two. But they expect that communication. My players expect it. Uh, I think once in 13 years, I forgot to send the email and I instantly got 17 emails like, oh, what's the schedule for the week? What's happening? So you train them. Um, but that I think that allows you a bit of a buffer um, as opposed to going right up the stairs you know, for me after a game and saying, hey, how's everyone doing? No, inevitably, I'm going to run into some of the parents and if they really wanted to offer up their opinion. But but often the parents don't. And I think a lot of the reason the parents don't offer up their opinion to me is that I've trained them is not the correct term, but they know that they're going to get the little synopsis from me on Monday. They're going to get the schedule for the week. You know, I have a quote of the week. There's a lot of different stuff that we put in that weekly email um, that, you know, if I had to, when I speak to the coaches that I'm, I'm developing here at Leaside, that's the number one piece of advice I give them is to send out a weekly email of the schedule and a little recap and what's coming up and, you know, and, and it also gives the opportunity to say, Hey, and thanks to my assistant coach, Sally, for doing that great job running the, you know, whatever at the fundraiser or thanks to the parents. For, like it allows you in writing to put something on paper that, you know, the kids can see the parents. I send it to all the players and all the parents or guardians. Maybe in the case of our team, we have some kids who bill it. So everybody's seeing the exact same message. And I think what? that's what's most powerful is that et there's no confusion. There's no one saying, oh, well, when you talk to Richard over there in the hallway, that's not what I heard you say, right? It, it's very direct, clear, uh, printable, as I always like to say. They can print it out, <laughs> um, but it's in writing. And I think that's, yeah. that's powerful nowadays. What I'm, what I'm referring to is um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. And sometimes you give parents too much information and they'll come right back at you you know saying that well you know you said you were going to be teaching passing this week and you haven't done it i'm not i'm not talking about that kind of world i'm referring to particularly with the kids 10 and under uh making it very clear to parents what it is showing them through video uh, through slides and whatnot showing them what programs are involved and why their kids are being shown certain things a certain way we don't do any of that it's left to the coaches and this is a leadership vacuum with the branches with hockey canada and with associations they do a really lousy job of educating parents as a parent uh, and then we're all parents i think uh, we want to know what kind of a program our kids are getting into doesn't matter whether it's dance gymnastics hockey uh, piano. We want to know what it is it's being taught and the approach that's being used. And as long as, you know, you're sort of following that, then we're, we're good. We know what's going on in the school system. We know what their qualifications are, but in hockey, we don't share anything, nothing. Yeah. I, I just got to interject here on that because Richard, for two, since 1990 uh, and the mission statement, until you do the exercise, you won't appreciate what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, though. I think and I, I saw you nod your head and uh, sideways. And it's because of that reaction. It's not why uh, it's not the skills you're teaching and what you're doing at what point in time. It's why you're doing it. Right, right. And if they appreciate the why of what we're here for, which is the life skills you're going to learn trying to learn 
and be the best you can be. Then you can go out in the hallway and talk to kids because that's where you're coming from. It isn't the score clock, the result. It's not the X's and O's, which they don't understand and you're willing to share with them if you can. It's the mission and the purpose of the entire experience. And I don't care if it's junior hockey on the male or female side. On the male side, major junior is one thing. On the junior A side, it's another. It's a scholarship. That's sort of the goal for the junior A side. But until you know why you're doing what you're doing, it's no use explaining it and justifying it to anybody because anything you do won't be appreciated and be accepted. So create trust and belief whatever way you can, and it may work. 